Whoa. Whoa, what's up? What's up? Where did you make it cool? <laughs> We're back up here, baby. With a little review. Kinda. Sorta. Not really. I just wanna talk about Avengers Infinity War. I mean, if you wanna call it a review, you could. I'm really just gonna be talking about like what I really liked about the movie and the impact it really had on not just like the box office, but really the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, you wanna call it a review? I guess you could, but that's all I really have to say for this intro. So let me go ahead and get to it with what I really liked about the movie. By the way, this will have spoilers, okay? I wanna let y'all know, and major spoilers, not even mild spoilers, it's gonna have big spoilers in it, okay? I wanna talk about what I really liked about it, so I kinda have to say what happened. So if you haven't seen it, one, why haven't you seen it yet? Now I understand if you haven't seen the movie, but go see it, okay? I don't care what you're doing. Do not watch this until you watch that movie. And then just keep this tab open, whatever tab you have on, keep it open, and then whenever you get done seeing it, you can come back, you can finish this video, okay? All right, but yeah, there will be spoilers, so if you haven't seen it, again, I would say watch the movie, then come back. But anyways, like I said in the beginning, I do want to briefly talk about what I really enjoyed about in the movie, and the first thing I really liked was the tone, okay? This movie had a more serious tone from the start, all right? It wasn't like your typical, you know, happy-go-lucky, jolly, I guess, Marvel movie, which I'm not saying they're all, like, jolly, because they're not all jolly, necessarily, but this one is different from the rest of them. It has a serious tone from the start. I mean, Thanos literally kills Loki, who is a pretty relevant character. He straight murks him, snaps his neck in the beginning of the movie. So when I saw that, I was like, yo, this is fun to be real, all right? This ain't no, this ain't no game, all right? The sense of danger is very, very real. I mean, even Hulk, man. Hulk, Hulk ain't scared of nobody. This man ran once with Thanos. He got whooped so bad, he didn't want to come back. He did not come back for the rest of the movie. This man did not return. He did not return, bro. He never came back. Bruce was trying something in the whole movie. This man would not come back, okay? He literally would not come back. It has a serious tone, but it's not overly dark, okay? It's not like Batman or Superman where it's literally gloomy the whole time. And it's like, bro, is there gonna be any jokes in this movie? It has different, different, um, different um, comedic, can I speak? It has different comedic aspects, really through the different varied personalities of the different characters, which actually takes me to my next point. The character dynamics in this movie were great, okay? The unique mixtures of all these different characters teaming up and acting with one another and working with one another, bro, I'm telling you, it, it was fun, all right? It was fun to see. It definitely had different comedic tones, like some characters had different comedy from other characters, like Star-Lord and, and Thor had some funny moments, Doctor Strange and Iron Man had some funny moments. Like, we had the whole Captain America Civil War gang, the Guardians of the Galaxy gang with Iron Man, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Minus Gamora, Rocket and Groot, Rocket and Groot with Thor. Like, yo, there was a lot of different character team moves that I really liked and they really worked well together. I mean, obviously some characters had more spotlight than others, but it was necessary for the story to move along. You know, I was really wondering before the movie started how they were gonna juggle all these different superheroes, like in this movie, like a two hour, what? I don't even know if the movie's two hours. It's like an hour and a half, maybe like an hour and 45 minutes, like that time span, how they were gonna juggle all these different heroes, but it really works. They really know how to do it. I mean, it's Marvel, so I really shouldn't have been worried in the first place, but I was really just curious how they were gonna do it, but of course it was perfect. Then the next part I really liked about it was Thanos, all right? Now, the villain is just as important as the main characters, all right? A good villain really helps push a good movie. And Thanos, I think, is definitely a good villain. He has that, you know, purge the world or purge the universe for the sake of the better world, whatever. He has that complex where he really thinks what he's doing is right, even though it's wrong. But um, what they do in this movie is they really explain his motives and why he follows them and sees them as right. Like they really, he doesn't have a fleshed out backstory, but they really explain why he does think what is going on is actually correct. What he thinks, what he's doing is actually right versus what the Avengers are trying to do to stop him. So, I mean, that really, I think, helped build up his character. But what I really enjoyed about Thanos' this movie was his relationship with Gamora. I think that's probably one of my favorite parts of the whole movie is their interactions. I mean... He loves Gamora, okay? He really does. And like, even though Gamora, you know, she hates him, but she has some sort of caring emotion for him. And you can see that throughout the movie, um, especially early on when she kills him and she like cries and all that. But yeah, Thanos, it shows that even he loves somebody. He really loves Gamora, which is why when he sacrificed him, like he was crying and all that. He really does love her, you know what I'm saying? And he says like, you know, he felt great pain, not just losing her, but some of his other comrades as well. I'm telling you, Thanos, it, it really helped build him up is I guess you could say human like he, he has emotion you know what I'm saying he's not just some um, empty vessel villain that you get like he has emotion he's not evil just for the sake of being evil he really thinks what he's doing is right man and I really think that really helped build up his character 
The action scenes in this movie were also A1. I mean, every action scene I really enjoyed. My favorite probably was when Iron Man, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, and then the Guardians of the Galaxy gang, minus Groot Gamora and Rocket. Um, when they fought Thanos on Titan, that was probably was my favorite scene, yo. Just seeing their teamwork and like how they worked together to overcome like this overpowered villain and restrain him in order to try to get the Infinity Gauntlet off. I'm telling you, that was really, really dope to see. I mean, the Wakanda battle royale was also really cool to see, but um, I think my favorite battle was probably the Titan battle. I mean, probably I think one of the best things about this movie is the outcome. And I know a lot of people were shocked when they saw the end of the movie. I was shocked, okay? I was shocked. People were sad, disappointed, passing out. Like everybody was just like, whoa, what really just happened? But the Avengers lost, okay? They lost. All right, we had all these different powerful superheroes who have won before time and time again when they really needed to, but against Thanos, who is OP, they lost, okay? But I don't think they necessarily lost just because he was OP, because he was. That was obviously a big factor, but I think they really lost because in the key moments of the movie, they chose their personal relationships over the fate of the universe. I'm not saying they didn't make any sacrifices as heroes, I'm just saying they chose the relationships they had with other people and other heroes over saving the universe. And like, you can see this like Scarlet Witch choosing, excuse me, I'm sorry. So Scarlet Witch choosing to not destroy Vision Stone versus, you know, when it's too late in the movie and Thanos can bring him back after she finally decides to do it and Star-Lord not killing Gamora when she tells him. She's like, yo, you need to kill me if Thanos gets me. And he takes too long. By the time he decides to do it again, Thanos, he's already there. We have Loki surrendering the stone to Thanos for uh, Thor's life. We have Doctor Strange choosing Tony's life, um, Tony Stark's life, Iron Man's life over the protection of the Time Stone. Although I will give Doctor Strange a pass because, you know, he saw the 14 million outcomes and he's like, there's only one we can win in. And so obviously he knew what we had to do in order for that to happen. So, but you know, the other characters, they didn't know. All right, they didn't know. So they really chose their personal relationships over the fate of the universe. And it really just shows this, the personal struggle that these heroes have. They're heroes, but you know, they're human just like anybody else. Well, kind of, not Thor, Thor's not really human. But you know, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm getting at. They, they're, they're beings, you know what I'm saying? They're beings, they have emotions, they have struggles, and it really just showed how, I guess, real they are. You know, they're not just these these gods on these pedestals, they have problems and struggles as well. I mean, Thor, I guess, is technically a god. But you know, what, you know what I mean, you know what I'm getting at. But yeah, I really don't think they failed necessarily just because he was OP, although that wasn't probably 90% of the reason, but I think the other 10% of the reason really was because not they couldn't do it, but they wouldn't do it and they didn't want to just, you know, sacrifice others for the betterment of the universe, which I understand, but yeah. yeah I just like the outcome of the movie. I think it left a very big impact, not just, you know, on the universe itself, the cinematic universe itself, but also on like the crowd. And when you go to a movie, you want it, you want to leave a movie feeling something. And this movie, it made people feel, okay? It made them feel, and that's probably the best way. So I really enjoyed the outcome. I thought, I thought it was very, I thought it was very masterful by Marvel to do that. Speaking about the impact of the movie, let's talk how this movie impacts the Marvel Cinematic Universe. All right, now looking at the movie and how everything ended, and looking at the future movies, I would say, the characters that passed away probably are gonna come back, all right? They're having a Captain Marvel movie, um, I think later this year, which I'm pretty sure, like the secret ending to uh, Infinity War, I'm pretty sure that was Captain Marvel, like the distress signal Nick Fury sent out. I'm not 100%, like don't quote me on that, but I think that's Captain Marvel. Um, but yeah, they're having a movie for her later this year, and Ant-Man just had his trailer drop today, like literally today, about for his second movie, so, um, I mean, I know Ant-Man wasn't in the Infinity War, but I just figured that was important information. Now, anyways, <laughs> yeah, but I don't think the characters that passed, I don't think they're they're dead. I mean, if anything, the contracts that these actors sign, man, it, it lets you know that it, it ain't gonna be dead forever. And I don't know when the next Avengers movie is coming out. Like, I really don't know, but um, I don't know. I just, it's, it's not it. But let's talk about briefly how it impacts the cinematic universe, all right? so. Marvel, well, I guess the Disney Marvel, they don't, they didn't have any rated R movies, but Marvel has done two rated R movies recently in Wolverine and Deadpool, and they did amazing. And in Affinity Wars, which is like the Disney Marvel side, um, they did, well, 
I mean, Avengers did Infinity Wars, not Infinity did Wars, did Avengers. I, 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 Avengers did Infinity Wars, which is the Disney side. So, um, what it really, I think, opens up the opportunity for more serious tone movies, because they show they can make one, and it doesn't have to be rated R. Um, I think this movie was just, it was a good movie, all right? It was just a great movie all around. Um, I just loved everything they did about it, and everything it opens up for them for the future. I just think Marvel has a lot of options now. They have a lot of options. Not that I wouldn't say they never had before, but this definitely opens up the door for them, which by the way, Marvel, if you're watching, I know y'all just casted Tom Holland as Spider-Man, great Spider-Man by the way, but if y'all need a new Miles Morales, if y'all ever wanna make a Miles Morales movie or a Miles Morales role, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I can get a cracking, you know what I'm saying? I can get it done for y'all, you feel me? But um, yeah, also Marvel, if you're watching this, I don't know. Could you like, I don't know, maybe recruit the X-Men back to the Marvel side of the universe? I mean, I mean, it's already Marvel, but if y'all can get the rights back for that, that would be dope. Which X-Men, if y'all are watching this, if y'all need a new X-Men too, you know what I'm saying? I get cracking for y'all too, you know what I'm saying? Just let me know. But anyways, that's all I gotta say, all right? I'm out. Goodbye. I hope you guys enjoyed the movie just as much as I did Marvel. You guys did an amazing job. I'm out. Adios.